This is the last day of the hearing sessions, which are part of the uh, examination into the Herefordshire Local Plan Core Strategy. I think we all know each other by now, so no need for any introductions. I see that there's filming today. Um, again, I would say if anyone objects, if they can let me know uh, if they don't wish to be filmed. Uh, this session is to do with any other matters. I've got some points that I would like to start with and then I'm going to invite, um, we have two people who wish to make representations today uh, to make theirs. After we have that session, I'm going to come on to uh, the timetable for the main modifications, exactly what happens to them. I'm quite happy if people want to ask questions, uh, if anyone wants to ask questions about the main modifications, the process, not, not the detail of the wording, etc., but just the process. I'm then going to um, hear the council's closing, and uh, after that I shall make a short closing, and that will be the end of these sessions. So I'd like to start with any other matters. Uh, I'm going to just follow through some of the points that we've been talking about in the uh, last two weeks. I want to start with uh, policy SS3 um, and the wording of that policy. Mr Ashcroft, I just want to take you through one part of it, uh, which I think probably for your benefit needs to be slightly tighter. That's the wording itself for the policy. And it is the one, two, third sentence. If monitoring demonstrates that the number of new dwelling, uh, dwelling completions is likely to fall below the target figure, the council will prioritise. And I think it needs to be much tighter. So rather than say is likely to fall below the target figure, it would be, it would be much better to, to give yourself a time period. So a particular monitoring, monitoring period from... Uh, the 1st of April to the 31st of March and if and if it does fall below that so you've used the likely word which means people are going to argue with you all the time that it is likely that that will happen so I think you, you'll be constantly fighting that one off unless you give a specific uh, time period in which you're, you, you want that to be considered in and then if at the end of that time period it drops below, then you'll do something. So I think that would be a much tighter way of wording it. Just take your views on that. I find that very helpful, thank you. Yep. And similarly, for the actual table itself, you've got net housing which can be delivered and you've given a specific number and I, I think you, you probably need to say indicative because th that number's taken from your trajectory and it it might be that there'll be variations in that number and you, you, you obviously you need the evidence to demonstrate either way because it comes in with the planning application but it just gives you a bit more flexibility um, all right that was that the next one uh, yep, was affordable housing and you sent me through some information, uh, and it was just, um, I just wasn't clear how that policy was going to be changed. Have you sent it to me? Is it on there? Uh, Okay, all right. Okay. Don't worry, Mr. Ashcroft, I'll, I'll look at it in the break. Um, there were matters which we left um, to be... Uh, you did some work for me on the five-year housing land supply and also I asked for some work on the number, the 600 number, and I, the work that I asked for was 
to just look at the basis for that with the RSS. And I mean, maybe it was just a, a, a sort of educated guess at that point. And you're doing, you know, it's similarly now, but that wasn't completely clear. So I was just going to ask you just to make that a little bit clearer about the relationship or just what the evidence base was for the 600 with the RSS. It just might have been that they did their a kind of best guess based on what was being delivered and that based on the numbers that are being delivered that you're doing the same, um, which is what I think from reading the information that you put forward. But that's why I wasn't clear. So just, uh, just that and then that uh, is to be um, uh, the five-year housing land supply together with that information um, I indicated we would consult on again and so I would like that to be consulted just for seven days because to put on the website um, I'll speak to Ros about certainly the people who were at that session and people who've um, made representations about that policy just with seven days and only on only specifically on, on on the information that's put forward was that one. The DCLG statistics, I've, <laughs> the, I've looked on their website, it says they will be published February 2015. It hasn't, it hasn't gone to March, it still says February. My understanding it's 27th, but it doesn't say that on the website. <laughs> so we, I assume that the next two or three days they are going to publish them. Um, and I set out at the beginning what we would do uh, when they're published. I think they're all my points I wanted to... Yep. Okay. So now we're going to come to the other matters uh, that people wish to raise that haven't been raised already. And I'm going to ask Councillor Powers uh, if you'd like to make your representations, please. Um, thank you, Madam. Uh, I originally... Um asked the programme officer what this session was going to be concerned with. Um, I know I managed to talk about semicolons yesterday, and in her message to her, I was talking about the difference between matters with a capital M and a small m. So uh, you have or she and you have directed me to paragraphs 1 to 42 of the introduction, which um, indeed was part of my representation, so I'm, I'm grateful for that. Uh, having said that, rereading the introduction to the core strategy, in fact, most of the issues raised there are introductory to what is the substance of the core strategy, and therefore we have covered most of these things. But I do have one or two specific questions and one um, general thing which in terms of the wording of the introduction relates to what you were talking about um, with SS3. So paragraph 1.13 is about the Herefordshire Natural Resources Development Plan, which um, I assumed was a background document in its own right, but actually is a section of the local development scheme and in that local development scheme, there's a timetable given for this natural resources development plan. And my question to the council is, um, is this on track? And how critical is this part of the local development scheme to the early delivery of elements of the core strategy? In other words, what are the risks if it falls significantly behind track, which on the face of it, it appears to be, because unless I'm ignorant of things that might have happened, you know, information and consultation stages, which are indicated as having already happened, um, have not happened. So that's, that's one question. My next specific question is on um, paragraph 1.22 which again references a background document mm. called the Local Investment Delivery Plan. Um, now, 
I, I, I may have seen that some time ago. I don't recall it. It's not listed in the documents as such. It may again be buried as a section within another document, but I'd be interested to know um, what that is, because that may well be something that uh, is relevant or informative to the infrastructure delivery matter that we were talking about yesterday, but I simply don't know. Um, the, I'll leave it there for the moment because the, the other points are more general ones. Okay. Thank you. <clears throat> yeah, so two different documents mentioned at the beginning, just their relationship to the plan, and if you could, are you able to answer that, Mr. Ashton? Well, Ms. Madam, um, in relation to the first point on para 113, uh, um, plainly we've already looked at this matter in some detail. Um, there was always the intention in the existing local development scheme to prepare a natural resources development plan document. Um, Madam, based on your examination, that's now been overtaken and included in our refreshed or proposed refreshed local development scheme with its substitution with the preparation of a minerals and waste local plan um, to an identical timetable to that set out in the existing local development scheme for the natural resources development plan document. So it's whether or not you want that paragraph in there or uh, uh, I'll leave you to look at the... It, it is. I mean, clearly, it it, it, it would make be. sense as part yeah. of the broader yeah. modifications yeah. to refresh that paragraph to reflect what is happening now. It does say will be. It, it doesn't, it doesn't yeah. imply that it has been. Uh, in paragraph one two two. Um, the lip. Yeah. Again, madam, um, my understanding of this is that it's a statement of fact, and it points out the work that our colleagues, principally in housing, are doing with the HCA in order to promote and bring forward a range of housing, uh, and in particular, affordable and social housing. And again, Madam, um, by virtue of the time that it's taking to bring this plan forward, um, no doubt there will be further versions of that local investment plan, but it's intended there to be a general comment as part of the context for how the plan uh, has been brought forward, and its broader relationship with other issues and other plans. Um, th thank you very much. I think. I think that's helpful. So, in answer to the first one, that's now been coupled into the um, what will become the minerals and waste strategy, which is being progressed as a separate strategy to the core strategy. Is that right? Yes, that's going to be progressed separately. Yeah. The minerals okay. and waste plan. Right. And the second one will be uh, included and revised and reflective of other changing information on the housing I numbers. I assume and... those plans are updated regularly. Okay, thanks. Um, would, would, would you like me to continue or do you want to have a, have, a, have a break and have someone else's voice? No, <laughs> okay. Um, on, 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 the, on the point of um, all these uh, supporting or uh, <coughs> other plan documents and their relationship to the core strategy. I, I, I think I'm not alone, not only before this examination, but during it, in being, um, you know, confused quite often about actually what the relationship and the status of these documents is in relation to one another. We've, we've unpacked some of this specifically in relation to, say, the Hereford area plan and so forth. But I, I do find the... Um, figure 1.1 sort of flow chart of this relationship extremely unhelpful um, that may just be a personal thing but you know I, I, I tend to glaze over when I see these kind of flow charts anyway but, but th this one doesn't seem to me to express clearly what the um, relationship between the core strategy the local plan and the many other Suite, or the suites of documents that inform that uh, amount to. And I think it would be really helpful um, for, for everybody, not just those of us who've been involved in this process, but for everybody in the whole county to have some kind of clear infographic which was able to express this, if possible, in, in, in a way which didn't have kind of multiple arrows leading in every direction and 
do you see what I mean? I'm, I'm not claiming it's an easy thing to do, but I think, I think it would be really helpful. And I, I, as, as an experienced inspector, I would value your personal view on whether this is, you know, uh, a good example of, 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 of such a graphic or, or not. Um, a, a, a couple of other things which do occur to me in relation to this, and, and again, I, Madam Inspector, I would, I would welcome your um, views in relation to other examinations on this. Um, it is the case that something like 60 documents have been submitted to you by the Council post-submission of the strategy. Uh, so by definition, none of those documents have been available to the public to inform the pre-submission consultation process. And I, I would query the, um, you know, the validity and the justification, not, not the justification, the, the, the justness of that really from the public's point of view, unless it was um, documents which literally couldn't be submitted before that because it, they were dependent on information that was still arising, but I don't think that can be the case with, with all of them. Um, and finally, uh, the, I mean, I, I, I have continuing concerns about issues that we raised in the very first session, but I won't return to them now because that would not be welcome, I'm sure, but you know what they are. Um, but in, in respect of what you opened this session with, um, with SS3 and the need for um, monitoring and flexibility, paragraphs 139 to 142 specifically talk about this. And I wonder if in the light of the modifications you're proposing and have proposed, um, whether these paragraphs need to be... Uh, you know, aligned with, with the rest of it. Yes. Thank you. Thank you very much. Yes, I'm sure you'll, you'll look at that. Uh, <laughs> it's not a matter of soundness to do with the, the figure. I'll, I'm clear about all those documents, but I work in planning and I deal with these documents all the time, so I understand. I think I know what the documents are, just but about. I understand the relationship. But the relationship, the expression of the relationship is puzzling to me. I, mean, I know it was midnight last night, but I was struggling to understand this. It's not a matter for sound, so I'll leave it to the council. Um, again, the, uh, uh, lots of concerns have been raised about material that's been received throughout the process, and it is an iterative process, and uh, information does come through um, throughout, throughout the hearing sessions, in my experience, but I do have to address consultation and the legal compliance tests, and I, I will set that out, uh, as I said, in, in my report. Thank you very much, Councillor Powers. Councillor Matthews, yeah. <coughs> make your point. Thank you, uh, Madam Inspector. Um, as far as the uh, uh, evidence based on the um, Royal Housing Background Report, I think that's been thrashed out and dealt with. Yes, so, any new points? Uh, uh, well, I would like three bullet points, if you will allow me. The fact is the last day, and you'll be a little bit generous on HD3. All no, I, would... I won't. No, I can't, <laughs> Councillor Matthews, because... Oh, fair enough. The reason is that it prejudices yes. other people who, yes. who weren't yeah, well, here. Well, if, if that's the case, I was hoping that you would be flexible enough to uh, just allow three bullet points. I can't open a session that's already been heard where there are particular speakers who've been here. Well, they're very important issues, but if you can't, I understand. I, I, I can't yeah. do it just because it prejudices other people. I understand. And there's been a session on that. So I'm not able to sort of reopen a session on a particular matter. Thank you. Anything else you'd like no, to no, raise? That's the other issue of the rule I was not being covered Yeah. Thank you very much. Thank you all. That's the end of our Any Other Matters session.